So this this team that I work with, um, uh, they started to. Uh, I said that, so we started to use this tool, and uh, the first thing I I looked at was um, I wonder what the age, right? If it was the age of the work in progress, i.e., what is the total age of the things that this team is currently working on? And this was the age, <laughs> drastic, right? As you can see, age in days in the left, and you've got the you know, number of tickets in the whip column right there, and it shows you that there's some stuff which is over 130 days old, and there's you know a lot of it, right? And this is a team of 20, you know, 15 people that are context switching continuously. They're not even trying to do Scrum. They're, they're almost trying to not do Scrum, right? <laughs> or even Kanban or whatever it might be. Whatever this thing is that they're trying to do. So um, the first thing we did is we visualized the workflow. A key thing that is quite powerful in metrics is when you're working with teams, try to visualize what that workflow looks like for the team or the team of teams. So this is the, this is the first thing that, um, uh, Paul, me, and many Scrum Masters in the organization did is, oh, sorry, I need to share my screen again. Apologies. So many, uh, much of what we did is we um, we individually work with our teams, you know? So Paul is this kind of, uh, uh, you know, lo lovely chap who, who let us self-organize to some extent and said, look, you know, can you go to your teams and figure out what their workflow is, right? Because to do in progress done is just not good enough, right? Just not good enough. We just don't know where the where the loopholes are, right? This is this is to do in progress done, right? If I was to do to, to do in progress done, that looks like that, and it's very very not easy to find out what the blockages are, right? Until you actually decipher it. So so what we did is we done the um, we we discovered what these things are, and we we, we developed a well sorry this team particularly what I work with, they developed a workflow saying that we first understand the work, then we build the thing, then we verify, I do some testing, then we go to the product owner, do a demo, and then we we, we, we do all of that stuff, right? So they had some form of workflow. And as you can see, as soon as we started to visualize their workflow, as soon as we can see it, as human beings, something happens in our brain when we see something, we can visualize it, we can observe something. Uh, our, the, the average whip went down by almost 60 days within just, I think it was a span of a month. So within a month, they just halved, almost halved, right? Their, their aging whip. Which is fantastic, right? Great news. Still not good enough because you can see, look, it's still taking them forty or fifty days, right? Stop and start, stop and start, stop and start, um, and this stop and start, you know, phenomena, right? Stop, you know, um, uh, which is a plague. One of the ten plagues uh, is what I would call it, right? <laughs> in Moses' context, right? One of the biggest plagues that we've got in organization is context switching. We believe, or organizations believe, the more that we start, the more we can finish, and that is absolutely a myth. Right, absolutely, one hundred percent wrong. Because the more you start, the remember Little's theory or Little's law, should I say? Um, the, the longer the queues, I the, the the more work you start, the less work you finish, is 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 actually the mathematical uh, model that, that that Little's law, I, I believe, you know, uh, or his formula basically, you know, uh, you know, um, basically alludes to. So still not good enough, right? But the good thing is we can now visualize the workflow and we can actually speak to leadership and speak to the organization like saying, look, look guys, do you really want to do this thing? Do you really want to have silo teams where you have 10% of this person's time, 10% of this person's time? Do we want to work in a different way? You know, this is like me, you know, being, going against, not going against the pharaohs, but basically you know, advising, consulting, you know, saying, you know, there must be a better way of working. Can we do Scrum? Can we do Scrum properly, actually? Can we get fixed teams? And by fixed teams, I don't mean indefinitely. I mean, for a period of time, can we have the same pe people, right, in the same team cross-functionally with a different quirks and skill sets coming together daily and working towards the movement of value? Can we do that, please? And it was absolutely fantastic because they they saw the data, they saw the, the actual results, and they said, yeah, absolutely. And this is what it looked like six months later. Six months later, the whip was was was, was fabulous. You know, uh, it was almost um, things wouldn't take more than fourteen days because now this team is starting to break things down with their hammers. They're breaking down the tool, the, the, the big blockages, and they're actually cross functionally working together. They're not working in multiple different teams. They're working in one focused, you know, team that's on a mission to get things done, on a mission to flow, and they got a lot, a lot of freedom. This team got a lot of freedom, by the way. So. They went from in slavery from when I joined with them. They were very much, you know, defeated. The the language they were using was defeated. You know, the way that they were thinking about work was 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 defeatism. You know, essentially, 
they had more people at the beginning. They had almost, at one stage, 15 or 14 people in this scrum team working on, you know, stories. By this point, six months later, they had about seven people. All the people needed to move the value. All the people needed to get the Israelites out of Egypt and away from, from slavery. They had all the manpower and human power and female power needed, right, to get things done. And this is what it looked like. This is what flow looks like. And they were happier, you know, they felt safer. And how do I know that? The retrospectives. The retrospectives were far more fun. You know, the energy in the room was of banter. Um, not to say there wasn't banter anything before, there was banter always, but there was a different mood music and energy in the room or in the remote environment, even during COVID. This team was excelling. They delivered on value early and often, you know, and it was quite remarkable.